by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Tano Program. Cars Plus, visit us today during Ram Truck Month. IP&E, Fueling Excellence, McDonald's of Guam, I'm Loving It, and King's Restaurant, located in Tamuni and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, the governor is in the nation's capital. Her talks include the current H2 worker woes for Guam. Plus, the first session for the 35th Guam legislature gets going down at the Guam Congress building in Hagatnya. And the Guam Memorial Hospital is being called out in audit shows they have been slacking in collecting money that patients owe to them. Half a day and good evening, Guahusi Nick Delgado. Well, a set of bills introduced by Speaker Tina Munio Barnes, Senator Peter, Jose Pito Chalahi, and Senators Regine Bisco Lee and Amanda Shelton that would soften penalties for consensual underage sex. But Chris Barnett asks Is there really a need for this piece of legislation? And does it create loopholes for predators? Here's more. Bills 50, 51, and 52 reducing penalties for consensual underage sex, even in instances where 19-year-old adults have sex with 15-year-olds. As it stands now, 18 and 19-year-olds who have sex with 15-year-olds charged with felonies and registered as sex offenders. Speaker Barnes says the legislation wasn't her office's idea. At the request of the Assistant Attorney General, having meetings uh, with this uh, 35th Guam legislature, that we decided to make sure that we fix up the, the provisions that are already in place and uh, follow the guidelines that they've recommended. According to a release from the Speaker's office, the bills aimed at high school lovers in a relationship where one partner becomes an adult. The bills would soften the consensual sex penalty from a felony to a misdemeanor, not require anyone arrested for consensual sex with a minor to register as a sex offender, and provides a four-year difference in age window, meaning a 19-year-old can have consensual sex with a 15-year-old, and if they're caught, they'd only be charged with a misdemeanor. Cynthia Cabot with the Guam Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence says she supports the intent of the bill, which she says addresses consensual teen sex from a realistic approach. But Cabot tells KUAM News the bills may open dangerous loopholes in how they lessen penalties, meaning predators may feel less threatened if the punishment doesn't fit the crime. No doubt uh, if given an opportunity, they'll find every which way. But again, you know, I'll go back to this law being for the intent of it was to help those who innocently catch themselves in that situation. Right. A predator will be a predator will be a predator, unfortunately. So no matter what the situation, this is where I feel that our system needs to be able to weed through the predators and those who are caught in the system. We asked Cabot if she thought the bills provided enough teeth to prevent 18 and 19 year olds from convincing 15 year olds they have sex with to tell authorities they were in a high school relationship or that the sex was consensual. A predator will always be looking at a way out. It's on a case-by-case -case basis because there's still coercion, there's still power differential, and there's still the situation where is it rape or is it not? Or is it consensual? So, you know, again, it, it goes back to the situation and each relationship will be different. The Speaker's office referenced the AG's office wanting this legislation, but the real question is, is this a big problem on Guam? How much of a need is there for a legislative fix reducing penalties for adults who have sex with minors? I don't even think we should be going there. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And this very controversial piece of legislation is certainly already evoking lots of strong opinions from concerned Guamanians from all over the world. So join the conversation because we want to hear from you about it. As such, today's Pulse of the People poll is, should it only be a misdemeanor for a 19-year-old to have consensual sex with a 15-year-old? You can sound off online by casting your vote now on our Twitter feed at KUAM News. Well, you might have noticed she took a plane off island before the storm. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero attending the National Governors Association winter meeting in the nation's capital, where she's brewing up ideas and discussing federal challenges that face Guam's economy. Carmen Shalahi reports. On day two of the National Governors Association winter meeting, you can spot Guam's Governor Lou Leon Guerrero inviting Lisa Gevelberg, Google Global Marketing Vice President, to visit Guam. Can you come to Guam too? I haven't been asked that before. I'll, I'll um, tell you where it is on the side. 
The MAGA Haga is in Washington, D.C., discussing pressing economic issues, including the H-2B visa crisis. For example, in Guam, our strength is our geographic location. And so we have an increased military buildup, tourism is very strong, and we are booming in construction, but we don't have the labor force to meet for the demand, and we use H-2 workers, primarily from the Philippines. So. We have gone from 3,000 workers to now zero. So how do you deal with that where uh, the federal government is saying, oh, Guam, we support you in the military buildup. You know, we want to help you, give you the resources, but then creates a policy that just is an obstacle to moving forward. One of the panelists, Richard Haas, the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, responds. I think people say, how can we even talk about opening up for more people coming in if we have millions and millions of Americans who aren't employed? And even if we have millions of open jobs like we do now that we can't fill, I still don't think you can win that debate if we have a large-scale unemployment problem. Speaking on, quote, innovative entrepreneurship, Guam's governor also talked about aquaculture, her plan to expand Guam's economy to grow and sell local fish. Our University of Guam has done the research for aquaculture. They just have a bit of a difficulty, like you said, bringing it out into the community. So I want to hook them up with the our uh, Guam Economic Development Authority. So I guess I wanted to say, how do we get these venture capitalists to come to Guam? She's dining at the White House, says Acting Governor Josh Tenorio, who welcomes the outcome of the trip. She continues to make a good impression with national leaders and uh, making good friendships with other uh, governors of states so that we can try and get our resources together and uh, increase um, the uh, quality of life for everybody. The governor is expected back on island March 1st. Reporting for Guam's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlaki. Thanks, Carmen. Well, the first full day of session for the new 35th legislature featured just two bills. Gov Guam's new single provider employee health insurance contract was the loan item in the afternoon. But senators spent more time in private huddles than on floor debate. Speaker Tina Munya Barnes' measure requires bidders to include both GMH and GRMC in their coverage. But one local insurance company has come out strongly against it. Nessa Lecanto reports. Bill sponsor Speaker Barnes says it was about choice, and most government employees have already shown their preference is to have coverage at both hospitals. We are discussing giving our government of Guam employees and our retirees the power to decide the health care options and to go to where the critical medical expertise is. Currently, Madam Speaker, more people People choose to be covered under a health insurance plan that includes both hospitals in their network. But as the only local provider that doesn't have a contract with GRMC, Take Care Insurance has lobbied hard against the measure, saying it creates an unlevel playing field and premiums will rise because of the private hospital's high rates. GRMC has responded by saying that Take Care is citing its rack rates and that its negotiated rates are much more competitive. A fiscal note by the Budget Bureau could not determine a rate impact because the rates are still subject to negotiation. But Barnes points out that the government has negotiated for the Medicaid and MIP programs, which do have contracts with a private hospital. She says GovGuam employees should have the same option. Otherwise, if GRMC continues to be out of the network, the patients would have to pay these unnegotiated costs. And GRMC has said unlike its in-network negotiated rates, the employees who are not covered would be paying out of pocket and at a much higher cost. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. And senators reconvene tomorrow. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. A simple handshake 
That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder and to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy, to the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. You can make each connection count with it e Prepaid. Talk, text, and share with the best price, daily plans, and rates. Stay in touch with loved ones, whether they're in Tumon, Garapan, San Jose, or even San Apollo, on the widest network in the Marianas. And reach out to friends and followers all over the world with the fastest, most reliable 4G LTE data. it &E, explore your world. The comfortable, the familiar. Neither one of these will ever give you a new perspective on things or make your heart skip a beat. Comfortable isn't something you'll tell your grandkids about. And familiar? Well, that'll be there when you get home. But until then, there's a world that needs exploring. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's possible in the family of Hyundai SUVs. Welcome back. The weather might have rained on your weekend plans as many videos showed. Super Typhoon Wutu brought heavy wind and rain, but Monday, some sunnier skies. The National Weather Service says the typhoon is slowly moving away from the Marianas. The sustained winds of 125 miles per hour. The storm is projected to weaken as it enters a hostile environment. Left to pick up the pieces here at home, as Governor Josh Shinario says it was just another GovGuam Monday. All the agencies are back on track. Everybody had a normal day uh, waiting to hear from GPA to make sure that all our residents have their power uh, returned and uh, making sure that Public Works uh, will just continue to finish up their cl uh, cleanup, get all the paperwork done, get all these people that were working overtime paid. I'm just grateful that we didn't have uh, experience the full wrath of this big typhoon, but um, I'll just tell you that if we, if and when we do get a more serious um, threat, then you know we definitely will be urging people to um, get into shelter and make sure that um, people stay safe. Planning for the next storm, he's committed to make improvements down south to areas that are prone to flooding. Our friends from the National Weather Service do warn beachgoers that seas and surf continue to be hazardous, and a small craft advisory remains in effect. Many of you kept close watch on the storm and posted your view on social media. Let's bring in Jason and Asha with an overview of how you reacted to Mother Nature's weekend curveball. Hey, what's up, Nick and Hafaday Guam? Of course, it was a long weekend, and Asha and myself and the rest of the KUM Digital team were really busy covering the storm and more importantly getting the reaction that you guys had in Asha it was a jam pack weekend let's oh take a look gosh, at yeah let's take a look at what some of you guys had to say the most used emoji by far when we were reporting that schools were back in we reported that we went back to core 4 was the prayer it was the prayer emoji and good on you guys for using that because it let the entire world know that we were safe okay we also asked on twitter a poll how did you spend your storm weekend 55 percent said good on you guys you guys spent the day at home and indoors 23 percent Guys said you did the Netflix thing. That That's me. cool too. That was you. That okay. Was and nine percent said you were out and about. So maybe there were people out making social videos, kind of like we're doing right now. Okay. We also have 
some interesting comments right now. Of course, Acting Governor Josh Tenorio was going around the island. A lot of people on our Facebook page were saying they appreciated Josh Tenorio showing up in person, letting them know that he was on the scene, making sure that everyone was okay and taking care of these southern villages. So good on you, Mr. Acting Governor, and good on you folks down south. We appreciate you guys. Okay, and then on the lighter side, Nick, of course, did this stand-up where he was reporting from the airport, and people kind of like this little guy who video bombed right there. Um, he was scratching, so people thought that was kind of funny. Okay, and there was also some interesting things that you found, Ash. So over on our Instagram page, you can see that there was this guy with a surfboard that somebody caught on camera, and we later learned that his name is Christian Potter. So he messaged us, and this is what he had to say. I am the surfer from Inarahan today. I have extensive rough water experience, and even then I erred on the side of being conservative today. For the record, I don't advise anyone to do remotely what I did today, especially without years of experience. That is nice. Okay, so you guys know how we do things at KUM Digital. We want to make sure that everybody is informed, but also that everybody is having a good time. Back to you guys. Plans to move the mayor's council to Adeloupe on hold for now. Chris Barnett has more. It's a crowded house. Adeloupe, just not big enough for the Leon Guerrero Tenori administration or village mayors. With plans to move mayors to Adeloupe put on ice. We're still trying to fine tune everything as far as space here at Adeloupe. Uh, we're still trying to figure out places where people are going to be located. So, you know, things change almost on a daily basis. Um, so right now, as far as space is concerned, uh, it's hard to kind of just really fine tune or figure out where everybody needs to be located or how much space we even have available. The administration had said the mayor's council would be moved to Adeloup so the mayors would have access to Leon Guerrero Tenorio leadership. Governor Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio assured us that they are accessible uh, even if we're here. Space is limited at Adeloup, but we don't recall that being a problem in the Calvo Tenorio administration. Guerrero tells KUAM News there are currently 91 Leon Guerrero Tenorio staffers at Adeloup. So we asked the governor's spokeswoman if that was more or less than the previous administration. Uh, you know, that's a good question, but uh, I wouldn't know the answer to that. I don't know what kind of personnel, uh, you know, the Calvo administration had, uh, you know, what areas they were put into. So I don't think I would be the right person to answer that question. A KUAM News review of a Calvo Tenorio staffing pattern shows about 60 staff detailed to Adeloupe in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2018. Space concerns have also led to Economic Development Chief Advisor to the Governor, former Governor Carl Gutierrez, seeking an office outside of Adeloupe that may cost the people of Guam $3,000 a month. And it's not just space concerns. Carrera tells KUAM News repairs are being made to Adeloupe using transition committee funds, and Savaris says the mayors did look for another office in an effort to save taxpayers dollars. We've looked at other facilities uh, with, that are within the government, um, the governor's footprint. Mm -hmm. However, those facilities are still not quite um, enough space for us. Carrera adds that office space woes will be worked out in due time. It's only been six weeks, you know, a lot of moving parts going on right now. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Sports is coming up next, but first to look at your island weather. Every day a plus.
MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Chaos unfolds as Taco Bell's beloved nacho fries vanish yet again. Where did you go? What if they were in another dimension? There are fries seasoned in Mexican spices trapped somewhere out there. And I'm gonna bring them home. Daddy's gonna bring you nacho fries. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports, brought to you by Triple J. We get the show started tonight with last night's basketball highlights between the Guam Select team and a visiting professional team from Russia, Vostok 65. Check it out. Guam took to the court missing half of the national team members who recently dominated the FIBA competition in Thailand. The lack of size showed as the game went on. Russia attacking the paint early and often. Sevi Sisuiko put up seven points for the home team on three of 11 shooting from the field. Three pointers good here. Russia wowed the crowd with a few dunks and great outside shooting. Alexander Gurmak with two of his 23 points off the two-handed finish. Vostok 65 led 33 to 14 after the first quarter of play. Team Guam working the ball around. J.P. Cruz drives and dishes the ball to Dre Bailey. The visiting Russian squad jumped out to a big 60 to 34 lead at halftime. Cruz earned every bucket last night working against the much bigger defender. Drives right and pulls up baseline. Banking in the shot high off glass. Team high 22 for JP. Kwame Mitchell from New York playing overseas. Mitchell showing his explosiveness to get to the rim. The game way out of reach midway through the fourth quarter as Guam trailed by 38. Irv Jose wasn't tripping though. He knocks down the corner three here. Guam Select lost the exhibition match to Vostok 65. 114 to 65. Moses Ihambe. Led Vostok with 24 points. Will Stinnett put up 10 in the loss for Guam. Keep it with basketball. The Triton Men's Basketball League Championship game went in favor of the Harper Valley Kennel Bulldogs. 122-109 to over UOG. Dre Bailey led the Bulldogs with 32 points. Teammate J.P. Cruz chipped in with 23. Logan Hopkins led all scores with 46 for UOG in his team's losing effort. The Bulldogs finished the Triton League with a perfect 8-0 record, while UOG was 3-5. The Payless Markets Community Foundation presented a check of over $26,000 to the 2019 Kick the Fat 5K and 10K beneficiaries. 